Hi, I'm Dale Zartman, President of Rescue Methods. I want to welcome you to the first installment of the Fire Rescue One Technical Rescue Video and Blog Series. If you haven't already gone to Fire Rescue One's website, make sure you go over there and check out our article on high angle solutions. <clears throat> that article focuses on two things that we're going to highlight in this video component. Gaining access to our victims in a rapid manner and extricating those victims in a rapid manner. We've got some quick field based, based techniques that we think will be applicable and effective for your organizations to streamline that point of the operation. Every month we're going to be installing a new technical rescue article along with video components and blogs. So make sure when you're done uh, watching this video segment today, you start interacting on the blog so that you can get feedback from other rescuers as well as share your own perspectives and insights about how these concepts or techniques may be impactful at your organization. Thanks for watching. We're going to start off with access. When we're contemplating gaining access to our victim, we need to look at two different things, avenue of approach and equipment. <clears throat> we may be utilizing a different avenue of approach based on uh, better edge protection options, meaning they're limited, we don't have to get out as much gear, additionally more suitable anchors, easy deployment points. We want to think about speed. That type of access point may not be the same avenue of approach that we utilize to actually extricate the victim from the area. So we may be accessing and then by foot or other means transferring that victim to another location so that we can extricate them utilizing a high directional or some other variables along those lines. When we start focusing on equipment, we're going to start with rope. We're going to talk about some quick easy methods that you can pack your rope and deploy it in such a manner that you can accommodate a belay line and a main line utilizing one system. We're then going to veer into uh, our basic equipment components for that access uh, issue. We're going to talk about a moving brake and we're going to talk about a fixed brake utilizing two systems that can easily convert into rescue applications. When you begin to think about how you're going to pack your rope bags, the process really needs to start with pre-planning the hazards in your district. You want to identify what the average or maybe even the max height of your uh, hazards are, as well as any run that may be included on the top to reach an, a suitable anchor. From that point, you can determine if the rope lengths that you have on your department are going to be uh, able to be compatible with this system I'm about to show you. Ideally, what we want to be able to do is to deploy two ropes over the edge that will be able to reach the bottom and be able to do that with one length of rope. That helps us to be uh, faster in our deployment as well as more efficient with the gear that we carry. So what we're going to do is take a rope bag like this one here and we're going to stuff it with both tails at the top of the bag. When we find that midpoint in the rope and begin stuffing the bag we want to put a, some sort of midline knot, either a figure eight or a butterfly knot. We're continuing to talk about our moving brake fixed belay application for uh, rescuer access. We've deployed both tails of our rope bag over the edge and we've identified the midline knot that was buried in the rope bag. We're going to take this midline knot and clip it to our rigging plate here and one side of the tail, one tail here will begin to act as our moving brake line. The other side will rig into our belay device. You can see that we've selected to use one rigging plate for both elements in this application. We have a bomb proof anchor here that we're confident can sustain all the loads that we're going to apply to it. Again, we're only using this for access with one victim or one rescuer on the a rope at one time. If you choose to use one bomb proof anchor such as this, it's acceptable so long as you analyze it to ensure that it's going to be capable of meeting your needs. Conversely, if you elect to use two separate anchors and err on the side of caution, that is also perfectly acceptable. It's never incorrect to err on the side of safety. Once we have our midline knot hooked into our rigging plate, we'll go ahead and clip or rig one side of the uh, knot into our belay device. You can see that we've selected to use the MPD in this application. So we'll rig our MPD. and clip it into the other side of our rigging plate. Once the MPD is rigged, 
or the belay device that you've selected to choose, we're going to haul the belay up so that it's ready to clip into our rescuer's harness. Once we have both tails rigged into our hub, we're ready to begin our descent. As you can see, one of the downfalls to this system is that our belay and our main line are going to be the same color. If you're an, uh, an operation that functions on colors and tries to split those up, this may be confusing. You want to make sure that you understand you're going to call main line and belay and not call out by rope color, as again, both ropes are the same color. Once we have everything rigged in, we're going to get our rescuer ready to access the victim. The belay is here. He can go ahead and clip this in, and that will allow him to safely move towards the edge. By moving towards the edge before he rigs into his descent control device, he's going to be able to alleviate some of the pain and suffering that comes along with trying to fight the rope as you work your way to the edge. So we'll clip into the belay, we'll walk ourselves out and measure off our main line somewhere near the edge and pick, select that point as the point that we're going to rig our descent control device in on our rescuer's harness. From that point, he's immediately ready to transition the edge and descend uh, to our victim's location. One thing that's very helpful when rigging the MPD is to utilize the rigging diagram on the back of the device. You want to keep the device in the closed position when initially viewing the diagram. Once you begin to spin the plate, the diagram moves and can create some confusion when you're trying to get the device rigged. By taking a bite of rope with our load side on the load side of the diagram, we can just hold the bite of rope in position while we spin the back plate of the device open. Once the device is open, we take that bite of rope and lay it into the device just as the diagram called for. Once the bite is in place, close the device, making sure that the rope has exited the device in the appropriate location, and roll the device over and rig it into your anchor. As we continue talking about access options, we're now going to discuss application of a fixed brake as opposed to the moving brake that we previously discussed. Again, we've uh, lowered both rope tails over the edge and identified the midline knot that was buried in our rope bag. We're going to take this midline knot and clip it into our anchor. As you can see, we're using a rigging plate here to space our devices out so that it will allow for uh, ease of operation for both devices. We want to make sure that we kill this rope out of the way where it's not going to impede the operation of either device. In order to do that here, we've clipped a carabiner back into our anchor strap and we're just going to clip this rope tail or this figure eight knot into that location. Okay, we've rigged both tails of our figure eight knot into our belay and lowering device. And as you can see, we've spaced them out on opposite sides of this rigging plate. Again, we want to make sure that we allow enough space for ease of operation on both devices. From this point, we're going to haul both rope tails up until they're topside and in a safe location for our rescuer to rig in. We need to make sure that we have clear understandings of the assignments of each rope, the belay, and the moving brake or the fixed brake line, and that we communicate those clearly. As we previously discussed, we're dealing with the same color rope for a belay and our main line here, and we want to make sure that our communication plan is in place so that we have safe and effective communication throughout the incident. As we continue talking about access options, we're now going to discuss some deployment features of some traditional hardware and some ways that this can be rigged and used effectively for our rapid deployment of our rescuers. This system here should be pre-built in your gear cache bag uh, and available to clip into your anchor just as you see it here. We need to start with an anchor plate that has sufficient holes to allow us to begin with a, de a descent control device, in this case it's our brake bar rack, all the way over to one side of the rigging plate. We leave a space, leave one hole empty so that you have some room to maneuver the brake bar rack as well as the uh, load release hitch. And then we clip our load release hitch into the next hole, leaving the last hole open to utilize as a uh, 
change of direction pulley in the event that we would change this over and use it as a haul system. As we follow it down, we have our load release hitch that is accompanied by a prussic mining pulley as well as paired prussics. These prussics can be seven, eight, or nine millimeter depending upon the application and the design load that you're seeking. We're advocates of using 10 mil rope for our load release hitch. However, nine millimeter is also acceptable. Again, it's going to be determined on the load capacity that you desire. When we deploy our rope just as we did earlier, we have again deployed both tails over the edge, ensuring that both tails reach the ground. We find our knot in the center of the rope, and again, we're going to clip it in to our anchor. For access purposes only, we're going to use this system as both our lower and our belay. If we're going to plan ahead and use this same location as our haul, uh, when we get ready to retrieve our victim, we may build a separate belay so that this can in turn function as our hauling side when we're ready to go. We're going to take the rigging plate and clip it into our anchor. Pull both rope tails up till the knots are both on the top side and then rig our, <clears throat> rig our main line into the brake bar rack and rig our belay side into the tandem prussic belay. All right, we're now gonna jump into our rescue sequence. So we've accessed the victim. We've given you several options to accomplish that in expedient manners. We're gonna talk about converting those same systems into hauling systems to enable us to get that victim from the bottom side to the top side. We're also gonna make sure we cover some mid-height packaging options. Mid-height packaging options are gonna be one of your more high-risk operations because you have to maintain the load while converting these systems. Each of the systems we gave you allow you the ability to do that. You just may gotta make sure that you safely progress through the steps very systematically, ensuring that you're uh, implementing safe operations and manipulating those systems appropriately. If you have utilized the traditional RPH system for your access option, and you then determine that this system needs to be converted to use for your rescue sequence, it can be done. There's just a few systematic steps that you need to take in order to perform that operation. So what we've done here is we've taken our tandem prussic belay and we have set the prussics. We're then going to lower the brake bar rack until our belay fully loads and we can unrig the brake bar rack. Once our belay becomes fully loaded, we can unrig our brake bar rack and replace the brake bar rack with the belay of your choice. It can be the MPD, another tandem prussic belay, or whatever belay device that you elect to choose. Make sure that if you're using it for rescue that it is a G-rated or uh, two-person design load belay device. Our belay side will now become our main line. We would go ahead and convert this tandem pressing belay into a traditional haul system by taking the tail and rigging in the selected mechanical advantage, be it three, five, or six, or nine to one mechanical advantage, depending on your load. Keep in mind that this application is design or the functions that we just performed are being performed while your load is at height. So we've had our rescuer descend a fixed amount of distance and while he is still under load, while our system is under load, we're changing that over and preparing to haul him back up. Were we able to deploy him all the way to the bottom side where he would be able to come off the load or take the load off of our system, we could simply unrig these elements and then rig them back in as we desire. Okay, we're talking about our rescue operations when we've utilized an RPH system for lowering our rescue to the victim. Our belay operator has locked off and tied off his belay. Our rescuer is at height, he's at the victim's location, and we're now gonna convert this system over so that we can haul our rescuer and or the victim back to the top side. With our belay locked off, we need to get this system here transitioned 
from the load being on our brake bar rack to the load being over on our uh, haul side of our system. So what we're going to do is take the uh, main line, lock off and tie off our brake bar rack. If you have additional hands, you can have an extra rescuer hold this in a soft lock configuration while we get the system ready to convert. So the first step in changing over our load from lower to haul is to tie our tandem prussics onto the main line ahead of the brake bar rack. <clears throat> We're going to clip those in to the carabiner on the end of our load release hitch. And we're going to also install our Prusik mining pulley behind our Prusiks and clip it into our load release hitch. In this case here, our load release hitch is not long enough for our, Prusik, our pulley to be uh, attached to the rope ahead of the brake bar rack. That's okay. You can put the Prusik mining pulley onto the rope behind the brake bar rack. Once the load is changed over, it will load correctly. After all your elements are attached, rigged in, and safety checked, we're going to go ahead and set our Prusiks out as hard as we can. The lower side of our RPH is now ready to assume the load. Making sure that we've allowed a little bit of slack into our belay so that it does not become loaded, we'll activate and utilize our brake bar rack to lower the load onto our tandem Prusiks. The load will begin to transition very quickly and you'll be able to remove bars to complete the transition of the load. As you can see, our Prusik mining pulley loaded correctly once we unrigged our brake bar rack and we're now ready to take the tail end of our rope and rig in our mechanical advantage system and haul our rescuer and victim back to the top side. Okay, so now we're going to how to talk about how to perform a mid-height changeover when we've utilized our MPD moving brake system. Again, we have our MPD performing as our belay device, and our rescuer has descended to our victim uh, using a brake bar rack, moving on this line here. In order to change this system over to where we can haul the rescuer back up while maintaining him under load, we need to first make sure that our belay device has been set. So we've pulled up any tension or any slack that may have been in our belay and we've locked it off and tied it off. We're now going to instruct our rescuer to slowly descend on his line until the belay becomes fully loaded. Once the belay has become fully loaded, he can unrig his brake bar rack, allowing this line to become slack. We can now unrig this. Pull up enough slack until we have enough to accomplish our belay functions and then rig in what will now become our belay device. We will change over our previous belay to become our lower haul hub as it is now maintaining the load. So just like we previously discussed earlier on rigging the MPD, we'll rig it in and reattach it to our anchor. Once this function has been performed, we'll instruct our rescuer to tie a midline knot into, his, into the tail end of this rope and allow him to clip that back into his harness. This line now that was the moving brake line has now become the belay. Our belay line has now become the main line. If our rescuer is able to get to a location where he could fully unload both of these lines, we would be able to unrig these elements and rig them back in uh, as necessary to perform the haul without having to go through this process. But in the event that he's unable to do that, these are the steps that you would take in order to perform that mid-height changeover. When we have utilized a two MPD system for victim access and have lowered our rescuer to the height of our victim and we're ready to change over and haul them back to the top side, the changeover with MPDs is absolutely seamless. 
These devices are fully capable of operating in lowering and then hauling operations without any load transfer having to take place. So once we've lowered our rescuer down and we're ready to convert these systems over, the only changes that need to take place are on our haul side. Our belay side is immediately ready to change over and begin to haul back up. With our, with our haul side, being the only necessary changes are undoing our lock-off tie-off and installing a, a prusik and our uh, mechanical advantage system. These devices here allow us the most rapid and seamless changeover while providing the greatest margin of safety in that there is no rigging change necessary. The rope stays in the device, the safeties are set within the device throughout the entire operation, and our margin of error is greatly diminished.